Hey there, I'm Dr. Sarah Mitchell of Helping Baby Sleep. Welcome to my channel. Don't forget to hit subscribe to never miss a sleep tip. Today we're talking about 14 and 15 month old little ones who are so adorable as they're starting to explore their world. And with this age comes a big change in their nap. So in general, most kids are starting to transition down to one nap around this age. Signs that they're ready to transition to one nap include... They will take one nap of the day, but not the other. Often this looks like they're not ready to take the morning nap. Rarely is it that they won't take the second nap, but either one is a possibility. The other sign might be that you're having to wake them up from both of these naps to kind of like make the schedule work. And, and you're finding your bedtime is now pushing later than eight o'clock because of these naps. So it's often time to move to one nap around 15 months of age. There are many daycare centers out there that have a one nap policy at 12 months of age. And in my opinion, this is far too soon. I've worked with too many people who struggle with frequent night wakings and 5 a.m. wake ups because their child only takes one nap a day. They are overtired, which leads to these more night waking and the early morning wake ups. So 15 months is kind of the average age. What do you need to do? Well, we're going to go back to those awake windows. Awake windows refer to the amount of time between sleeps, maybe from waking for the day to nap time or from waking from nap time until bedtime, with which your child can comfortably stay awake. Awake windows are based on observations of kids of this age group over many, many years. They're also related to the body's homeostatic sleep pressure. This is the idea that as we exist, we're metabolizing a molecule that um, has a byproduct that builds up and signals our brain when it's time to sleep. There's a big change at this age, and here's what it is. Previously, your morning awake time, so from waking for the day to being back to sleep, it used to be the shorter awake window of the day. But now when you go down to one nap, it actually becomes the longer awake window of the day. And when you first go down to one nap, that awake window is going to be somewhere around five to five and a half hours. But you don't want your nap to start any earlier than 1130. Because if you do, it means you're going to have a big gap after that nap before bedtime, which is less desirable. So if you have to stretch your little one to kind of make this happen, you're going to stretch them in the morning. They would have lunch prior and then they would go down at 1130 or five, five and a half hours, um, whichever was later. Now, the beauty of going down to one nap is that your child then will usually sleep for at least two and a half hours and sometimes even three hours when you first make that transition. It's a big nap. So if they wake up at an hour, an hour and a half, you want to try and get them back to sleep. That is not enough daytime sleep. As far as quantity of sleep goes, we're still trying to get two to three hours of daytime sleeps in and approximately 11 to 12 hours of overnight sleep. And 11 hours is average. 12 hours is a gift and not as many kids do that. So if that's you, count your graces right now. So from waking from that nap, your child then will have an awake window of roughly four, maybe four and a half, not very, not very likely though, four and a half hours to when they need to be back asleep. So a sample schedule might look like they wake up at 6.30, they have a five and a half hour window, making naps start around 12 with lunch prior, they sleep till three, and they're asleep again by seven o'clock. That gives you 11 and a half hours of nighttime sleep and three hours of nap. Some variation of that is good. The other thing you need to know about this nap transition is it might not be black and white. It might not be that you decide tomorrow we're doing one nap and then you're always on one nap. Things that will affect you flip-flopping from two naps back to one will really be your morning wake-up time. Because if your child starts to wake up early, maybe they're teething and they're up at 5, 5.30, you're going to have two naps that day. Because five and a half hours plus 5.30 a.m. only gets you to 11. And that's too early to start your one nap of the day. You will have a large gap before bed. Not ideal. That large gap before bed, if it's too long, it's going to cause some night wakings or early morning wake-ups or even just shift your schedule with an early bedtime and an early wake-up. Not ideal. So you might flip back to two naps, in which case you would use a three and a half hour window before that first nap you would cap that first nap, 45 minutes to an hour. Then you would have a three and a half to four hour window between nap one and two. And you would wake them up from that second nap by likely around four o'clock. And then you would have a four hour window for them to be asleep by 8 p.m. Now the next day they may sleep until 6.30 and you would go back to trying for one nap again. It's never black and white, but in general, most nap transitions, which are usually never black and white, will stabilize within one to two weeks from when you start doing this. If you like this sleep video, don't forget to hit subscribe to never miss a sleep tip.